Oh my God, I had sex with a mushroom. <laughs> no mushrooms on the pizza, actually. <laughs> Put a spore in me, daddy. His profession is making sex dolls. He's an apprentice, technically. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? I'm here today with my amazing girlfriend, Stitch, who is here <laughs> to quiz me on Little Mushroom, which is another Don Mei, another gay ship, another beautiful Chinese novel with sexy guys, except this time one is a mushroom. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I thought that was right. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, so you remember that one time you were gone all day? Yes. I read two whole books in one sitting. That is that insane. Many. So, question, would you still love me if I was a little mushroom? You pretty much already are a little mushroom. <laughs> I'd love you if you were a fun guy. <laughs> little mushroom hecked me up. So, you should read it too. I mean, it's fine, it's great, you'll love it. And I just wanted to hear your thoughts on the cover art. Like, what do you... Imagine the characters to be like. What do you think of the titles? There's little little Twinkie guy, and then there's like cop, <laughs> and there's a little mushroom. Is that the little mushroom? <laughs> they actually do shrooms. <laughs> yeah, this vibe is like sad. Also, like Judgment Day. That doesn't sound good. It's like all the humans are dead. There's only flora and fauna. I don't know what those words mean. The space cop guy is like surveying Earth and is like, are there any humans left? Nope. Ooh. No more humans. Like that. Except for this twink. Quick twink, get on the ship, cause it's judgment day and the earth is about to explode or something like that. Okay. This one is like, oh my God, I had sex with a mushroom. Um, which one of them is the mushroom or is-, is No, the twink guy, guy has to be the mushroom. Okay, fair enough. You're, you is, are right. Is he? About, yeah. Okay, thank God. Yeah. I couldn't read about a, a twunk mushroom. <laughs> okay, also, is he wearing his jacket? That is so- Astute of you. This is like a little like Victor Nikivarov final performance esque little <laughs> yes, it's circus. Would you circus? It's a little circusy. I was gonna say Ring military ringleader. He's not in the circus. I'm a little mushroom in the wind, and he's like, that's my jacket. <laughs> Maybe he gave him the jacket. That's cute. I love that as a trope. Okay. Also, he's got a teensy little like. It, oh, is there a message in the bottle? In the oh, wait, 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 wait. Is that a bullet casing? Yes. Okay. First meeting, he shot at him, and then he's like, I'm gonna take his bullet casings. You're scaring me, <laughs> your accuracy. Is he like a mushroom, and then he saw the shiny thing, and he was like, I'm going to take this, because I, as a cottagecore bitch, <laughs> love shiny things. You're half right. Okay. He was a mushroom living in the forest when he found a bullet casing. Wow. And he may have carried it with him for a very long time. Because he thought it was a cool thing. And then he found out that it was something used to kill other beings. And he was like, you're a monster! <laughs> so good guess. That's a good guess. Let Look, that life. Looks now. like he also has like a sexy little strap. Like, we love that. But also like pepper spray. <laughs> Is there a pepper spray scene? I, no, <laughs> I think that might just be gun stuff. Okay. Why are his eyes this color? It's just sexy points, I think, okay. honestly. It's not plot significant. He's just like hot. Okay, this is my prediction. Revelations, like the Bible. This is like what happened to the earth. It opened up and was like spreading mushroom plant vibes out to kill all the humans. What is Revelations of the Bible about? End of the world. Yeah. Also not good, but okay. also second coming of Jesus sort of thing. He's Jesus. If only. <laughs> the world is ending and humans are on the brink of extinction, but they're still stuck on earth. Okay, so there's no cool spaceship. Yeah, there's no escape. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and read the back of this for okay. you. Okay, okay. In the year 2020, the great future. Oh, oh, so this is set, <laughs> yeah. This is set in the now times. <laughs> yeah, hmm. hmm. Earth's magnetic poles disappeared and humankind was nearly wiped out by cosmic radiation. Oh. Within the span of a hundred years, living creatures began to mutate and devour each other, while the remaining humans, numbering in the tens of thousands, struggled bitterly in their man-made bases. In the abyss, home to the mutated xenogenics, there lived a sentient little mushroom. Because it had been nourished by the blood and flesh of a deceased human, not only did it take on a similar human form, but a similar name as well. Anja. It's no longer a little mushroom. It should actually just be called Fungi. But it, it should have been called Fungi! Anja is determined to go to the human base to search for his spore, which has been harvested by humans. Once there, however, he faces the omnipresent risk of discovery and certain death as he tries to keep his non-human nature hidden from the judges, whose responsibility is to inspect for and eliminate xenogenics like himself. Oh. And of all the judges, Colonel Wu Feng is the most perceptive and merciless. And sexy. And sexy. <laughs> as soon as he determines that someone is a xenogenic, he will execute that person on the spot. 
But Anjou's mutation goes undetected by Lu Feng's eyes, and so a tale of humans and xenogenics unfolds. So there's some peril in this relationship. <laughs> yeah, what? Okay, so he wants his spore back. Mm -hmm. So they took like his baby. Yeah. That's sad. Are there other creatures that are like half mushroom, half person? Yeah, okay, so actually, He's kind of the only mushroom guy. Okay. So he's kind of an exception to a lot of rules already. Mostly it's creatures, like insects, reptiles, somehow mutating with humans and creating humanoid, to various extents, monsters. Have you seen the movie Annihilation? I haven't. But humans can also get infected and then become monsters. You know, in the surviving human base, it is very important to catch, you know, people who've been infected early on. With the yeah, mushroom yeah. guy, is it more like he's a mushroom that took on a human form and now is like, oh, I'm becoming human, as opposed to a human taking on a mushroom form and you start stop being a human? Right, It's so it is different. Okay, okay. But to, for all intents and purposes, like if you were like a human looking at him, you would assume one thing, not necessarily the other. Gotcha. That's so sad that like the cop has to kill all half mushroom creatures and of course, <laughs> He, they're gonna fall in love, right? Yeah, so the crazy thing is at the point like Lu Feng or other judges are executing people, they are completely cognizant, they are human, <laughs> they may not know they're infected. What are the tests? They may not appear to it's, be affected. It's like the witch trials. Yeah, and this is honestly like part of the story. It's like, what are like, what are the factors involved? Like what are, how, what standards are the judges using? Who made what up these standards? What does it mean to what be is, human? Yes. And I bet you a little mushroom that isn't actually human is going to teach us what it truly means to be human. Maybe so. <laughs> Just kidding, I don't care about humanity! <laughs> so let me plant my seeds! <laughs> Humans actually! <laughs> Human, actually? Oh. Here's a picture of the characters, and this is Ooh. official art for the audio drama. He's wearing his jacket here, but now he's putting a cape on him. <laughs> I feel like- Does he get cold often? Put a pin in that for oh. a later slide. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, just try to ignore how big the little mushroom's feet are in this picture. I, like, I saw- Oh my god, like, why yeah. would you say that? You... I ruined it. <laughs> They're huge. They're so long. Hobbit sees. They're, yeah, a little bit. I like the little man in a military jacket with a little snatched waist. Oh, I yes. see they made it even more snatched with the belt mm. and another belt. There's even a belt on his boot. Yeah, and so this is like inside the human base, so it's a little more industrial. Okay. The wastelands outside. Anja is little mushroom, recently human, and now he's kind of navigating the world and he has a very calm personality because he's not human. He's not really as affected or as emotional as a lot of the things that are happening to humans, but he's kind of become a little more human-like as he goes along. Okay. Similarly, Lu Feng is considered very cold and emotionless because of his job requirements. You yeah. Know, killing everyone around you doesn't really make you the kind of guy people want to be friends with. So they're kind of drawn together because um, they're both similar in some ways and they don't really have any other connections in the world. This is like if The Last of Us and Alien and Annihilation and the thing. <laughs> this hits a lot of different um, sci-fi tropes, which is why I made up a little game for us. Oh, how uh, fun. If you have watched or read number six, this is like the perfect Don May like equivalent to get right into because there are a lot of similarities. Okay. A okay. shocking amount of similarities. So I made this with some other like favorite sci-fi series in mind. <laughs> Okay, this is just my now my new standards for all gay sci-fi. Okay, so go ahead Start with number six. How many how many bingos can you get uh, with number six? Hawkeye has a gun absolute body horror quotes from classic literature. Yes state sanctioned murder. Yes good soup Do They have soup in number six. Yeah, Macbeth soup. Macbeth soup. I don't want to have Macbeth soup an unexpected amount of bees is basically number six Yes, yeah, and at least one laboratory. Yes using this bingo card. You could win bingo four times <laughs> now try gun Oh my god, okay <laughs> try gun has a hot guy with a gun. It has body horror. It has other dimensions State sanctioned murder, yes. I was just read the Bible. And Wolfwood? There is one laboratory. There is a laboratory in Trigun, yo. Three bingos for Trigun. Just guess how many bingos you can get with Little Mushroom. It better be all of them. It's all of them. <laughs> There's an unexpected amount of bees. There's an unexpected amount of bees. And not only number six, but Little <laughs> Mushroom. Good soup. Let's hope it's not mushroom soup. Cream of mushroom soup. It actually is mushroom. Cream of mushroom. <laughs> There is mushroom soup. <gasps> I bet there is. It's kind of a funny moment though. He's <gasps> just like, this is a little 
fucked up, but I don't really care. Does he eat it? Yeah. Oh my god. He's a mushroom. He doesn't care about eating other mushrooms. Would you eat human meat? Ethically harvested. Oh my god. <laughs> no, I would not. <laughs> Moving on. Okay, here's another game. So we're gonna go down the list, okay? And you're gonna guess okay. which of the two characters. Zoned in. I was locked in on breeding kink. <laughs> yeah, that's in the list, all right. Which one has uh, a breeding kink? I hope it's the cop. <laughs> Why? I feel like most of the time with the breeding kink, it's all about like the top being like, I wanna put a baby in you. But also we can't forget about the bottom being like, put a baby in me. Mm -hmm. And okay, it's a little bit complicated though because he's a mushroom yeah. instead of a baby. There's the very real and reality. And he's missing his spore. So he's like, put a spore in me, daddy. And also like, hold your gun up to my head. I love your <laughs> bullet casings. Sometimes I wonder how I got to this point in life. Mistaken for a hooker. That's another number six thing. I know, I know. I tried wow. to work that in there. That's so funny. Who can fix a leaky faucet? Okay, um, mushroom guy. Wrong. Come on. Lu Fung fixes the leaky faucet in the relationship. And Jia looks at it and he's like, what the f is this? I don't know how to fix this. This is just, it's just gonna leak. Why is that in there? I thought it was like a sexy husband thing to do. It is. I love a useful yes. man. Good at cooking. Well then the cop. The mushroom does not how to cook. Nope. Cop. You think? Does he quickly pick Stop up on- Stop calling him a cop, that's rude. It's the cop and the mushroom. <laughs> colonel. The colonel does not spend any time cooking for himself. He's like eating like protein bars and the be like, ah, rations. But the mushroom doesn't even eat. He does though. As a human, literally living a normal human life, he gets a job. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, I know, it's sad, he hates it. He's like, I hate capitalism. Oh my God. <laughs> He makes really good soup, and he makes good soup for the colonel, and it's really cute. Aww. Yeah. Uh, I, the mushroom is mistaken for a hooker. You seem pretty confident about that one. Yeah, he's the little twink. Yeah, yeah. it's a big problem, actually. Oh. <laughs> Happens multiple times. Huh. He, like, he's walking around, and it's like, it's kind of like Mary Sue syndrome, where it's like, everyone is like, that's a hot piece of ass. What? Are you available? So he's like the hottest He's a like pretty boy. The boy's body that he took over, yeah. was that guy hot? He's not a zombie. He didn't take over the body. What he did was, this is all very consensual by the way. Okay. <laughs> sort of. He was a mushroom and there was a guy who was dying that he spent time with. And in the process of interacting with him and like trying to help him and eventually his body just being there and his natural mushroom instincts kind of taken over. He consumed a lot of human DNA. Okay. They're not exactly identical, but they're passably identical. Like he can use his ID card sort of thing. So he does look like him. So he does look like this original guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it's like the specific mushroom edge he has too. Makes him I think so. seem a little bit more submissive and breedable. I think so. He literally <laughs> seems submissive and breedable. He's like wandering around this kind of like this airy, like flung out of space look. Hmm. Um, he's not really like easily scared or intimidated. He's kind of called dumb a lot, but like- Mushroom is? Yeah. I think that has like kind of a charm to it. So yeah. he has to be taught like what to say to people. To turn them down to when turn they them want down. to sleep with yeah. him. Yeah. The colonel teases him then. You're right. Yeah. He, he likes it. He's very stone faced, but he actually does love tormenting and teasing him a little bit. Nice. Yeah. In bed? I wouldn't put past him. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> Reputation for being handsome. Ooh, the colonel. Is he known for being handsome? He sure is. That's like the best word in all Don May novels. It's all, he was handsome. He was the handsomest with his handsome brows. He's the number one handsome guy, and it's only because he goes around killing people for a job that, he you know, he's have single. A, okay. Like, nobody can approach him, but everyone kind of like, it's like, God, I hope when I go, it's him. Yeah, <laughs> sort of thing. Everyone kind of like is attracted to him from afar. Okay. Broke AF, that would be the little mushroom. Yeah. That's why he has to get a job. I picture him, he's like working at like the base of Starbucks. <laughs> kind of. But can I get, can I get like a, a mocha frappe, a tall mocha frappe? And he's just like, what is a cup? He ends up getting a very unconventional job. I thought he would be a good farmer. He'd know how to like fertilize and stuff. He works in the red light district. He's a hooker? No. Oh my god. But you could, you could see why he's mistaken for once. Does he, he works in the same building as all the hookers. Does he assist the hookers? No. He's like the doorman. <laughs> it's like where you can rent a best friend. <laughs> That's so funny. It involves having very steady hands, very fine detail. He cuts the words. umbilical cords. No. It involves extremely expensive and lifelike sex dolls. What? <laughs> you got, someone's gotta make them. 
His profession is making sex dolls. He's an apprentice, technically. <laughs> <laughs> to an old man. That is the funniest thing you could have said. He's just he, working on the eyebrows, really, you know, the details. There's some twist involved to that. And it all ends up somehow what? related to Lu Feng, and it's hilarious, but... Does I'll Lu Feng want a sex doll? No. Oh my god. What the f***? <laughs> right? I wasn't expecting that. Imagine Are they male sex dolls or female? I think they could be both, be either, you know, technically. Maybe the ones in question aren't female. Is there like a weird dick scene? No, there isn't, thankfully. Dang it's a little it. more tasteful than that. And okay, technically, they're not necessarily all men for sex either. You could have other f***ed up reasons for wanting one. You know, people grieve in interesting ways. Oh, so they're not sex dolls. They kind of are, though. <laughs> <laughs> Do they come to life? No, okay. they're just dolls. They're okay. like BJD, <laughs> BJD okay. you know, yeah. life-sized. Mm -hmm. He's making little anime sex dolls. Yeah, okay. It's interesting. Imagine if you found out that part. You would have never read I it. I would have never read it. If I had heard about that part, I would have been like, that's weird, that, that makes me uncomfortable. I don't think this is for me. Here I am, trying to get everyone else to read this book. <laughs> it is so funny. <laughs> it's so romantic, surprisingly, and really good. Good with children. I don't think that children would particularly like the colonel that kills everybody, mayhaps. No, that's a fair assumption. He's terrible with children. Mm. He's kind of busy arresting them if he interacts with them at all. He doesn't- I don't think he kills any children. The fact that you had to think about that is he, alarming. If he, I don't think any notable children. Any but, notable children? Any notable children. <laughs> yeah. um, the little mushroom eventually ends up um, kind of in a teacher role, working with kids. Not in the red light district, not oh at all, God. in a completely normal kinda, classroom I'm, setting. I'm kind of picturing him as like Kuroko from K Kuroko no Basket. You know what? That's, yeah. Yeah. I would say he kind of is more airheaded. Okay. Yeah. But, a plus student. Yeah. A colonel. Oh yeah. Nice. Which is what you want in a professional killer. Oh. It's a system like everything else, you know, they take tests, they, they pass classes and stuff and then they become executioners. There is a margin of error that is acceptable in the judges. That's upsetting. It's upsetting. So, so some innocent people have definitely gotten some killed. Some innocent people will die and everyone takes that into account and it's just like, this is the best we can do. Are there people being out there being like, hey, don't act like a mushroom or you might get shot. Inside the city, most people aren't worried about that because the benefit is that there has not been any mutation incidents like in the city since the system was implemented. Oh, I see. If you make it, oh. Things could always get worse. Does something sneak in? It's always a possibility. It probably mutates and becomes less detectable or something like that, right? There's always that. Mm. So, cool, sci-fi. Yeah. But the thing is, Wu Feng, 100% accuracy. He has never made a mistake. Says the man in a mushroom. Yeah, he was his first mistake. <laughs> his only mistake. He is suspicious, to be fair. It's like, he's like, never... you kind of smell like a mushroom, but you're pretty f***ing hot. I'll <laughs> let this one slide. <laughs> Gets cold easily. Obviously, the mushroom has his jacket on in every picture. Yeah. You know, I'm a little bit mush chilly. Mushrooms can get too cold. Mommy issues. Oh. The mushroom kind of was a mommy because he <laughs> Why lost... are you making this harder than it needs to be? <laughs> he lost his spore, so then he's a mommy with issues. <laughs> We're going to say it's the guy with an actual mom. Fung has oh, mommy no. issues. Oh, no. So, what, does, what does that even mean? Not in, a, not in a weird way. How can it not be weird? Let's just say trauma. All of his emotional issues. What emotional issues? All I've heard is that he has no emotions. Yeah. Oh, but all the, all the cold boys always have the most emotions. Yes. But don't they? Yeah. It do so, be that way. Yeah. So his mom is a character in the book, and she's actually a really cool lady. Okay. Yeah, she's really cool. It's just like their relationship is complicated and- Does she not like that he kills people? You could say that. Mm. Yeah, that wasn't really what she had envisioned for him. What did she have envisioned for him? Maybe a job that doesn't involve killing people. Mm. He eats random things off the ground. The mushroom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he does. It's like, oh, piece of candy. Does he have any superpowers? He does have a little bit of a superpower. Because this is almost like, I know there's lots of like Bible-y shit in here yeah. too, but there's, there's also like an evolution thing yeah. as well. That of is like, people are like evolving and mutating yeah. and like, is that better or worse? And yeah. should we just contain it so we continue to be normal humans? Or are we meant to branch out and be 
higher, better beings. That or, is totally addressed. That is a huge theme in the book. Cool. It really goes into that and it's exciting because there's no clear right or wrong answer. Mm. You can definitely see how muddled it gets. Um, and especially because like we're living in like a world in the story where things are changing extremely rapidly. I see. Yeah, it's Ooh. really interesting. Okay. The spork stop. It's a little fluff ball. Yeah. Oh, that's what the spore looks like. Does he get him back? He doesn't get him back. Is it like a number six moment where like the spore dies and then he's like, give me the gun. <laughs> I want to see a batshit moment where he like grabs the colonel's gun and it's like, give me my fucking spore. I wish that for him too. I'm not going to say anything. This is such cute so, art. It is so The little cute. chibis. Oh my God. Okay, actually, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the spore's personality because he, he does have- He has a personality? Yes. He is a I would kill for him. <laughs> right? Does the colonel kill the spore? Stop! <laughs> no! No! Listen, I, I'm going to give you very good news. The spore adores the colonel. It is- it likes the colonel more- That would more. make it even worse if no. the colonel ends up killing the spore. Listen, look, the spore loves the colonel even more than it loves Anja. Okay, so okay. it's like a ming. And the colonel is very affectionate to the spore. Well, now, now I have- I don't give a shit about these guys. I only care about the spore. Next slide. So, what's he calling? What's on the phone? It's like, yeah, um, no mushrooms on the pizza, actually. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a boyfriend that is killing people, you would kind of assume that either the other person is like absolutely disgusted by it mm -hmm. or they're like the partner that's also down to right. kill. But in this one, the mushroom isn't human, so he doesn't have the exact like empathy of another human, right? Right. So he like is kind of fine with it, but also thinks it's kind of weird. He also comes from a world where it's it's dog eat dog. It's mushroom eat mushroom. It's it like sur animalistic survival. And so in terms of humans engaging in survival behavior, it's like cold logic of like, this is what we have to do. I, this person was mutated and I knew that. So I killed them. Right. Like, when it's explained that way and like, you know why it had to be done. He's able to accept that much easier than someone who is like a friend or a family member of a person who's been killed. So there is some like huge themes of like, yeah, what does it mean to be human? How far can you go until like you've lost humanity? One thing that's really refreshing about Little Mushroom is that it's set in a very controlled human environment where like, you know, it's it's a state military run base. And so it's not exactly a very individualistic or free society. And this is very much where other sci-fi series would quickly turn into like a dystopian narrative where mm -hmm. it's like, there's a dark underbelly and you know, we have to destroy everyone in power and like free humanity and stuff. And it's not about that. It kind of just looks at that with a more objective outside standpoint where like there's pros and cons, but this is the best humanity could do and this is what we're working with and we're the story is taking place inside that and not trying to change that yeah so okay. i thought that was really refreshing because like in stories like number six you know it's very much like a utopian dystopian kind of dynamic where everything's either all good or all evil but this isn't a story about changing society as a whole so there's a poem in the story it's a very well-known poem okay and it kind of sums up humanity's like kind of courage to keep surviving in this world. And so it's a huge part of the story. So I'm gonna read the whole thing. It's um, Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night by Dylan Thomas. Do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. The wise men at their end know dark is right. Because their words had forked no lightning, they do not go gentle into that good night. Good men, the last wave by, crying how bright their frail deeds might have danced in the green bay. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Wild men who caught and sang the sun in flight, and learned too late they grieved it on its way, do not go gentle into that good night. Grave men near death who see with blinding sight, blind eyes could blaze like meteors and be gay. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. And you, my father, there on the sad height, curse, bless me now with your fierce tears, I pray. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. This is what humans are facing, the end of the world. And instead of um, going gentle into the good night of just dying easily or without a fight, 
they are struggling to the max and like not giving up no matter how many sacrifices, no matter how many risks, they are going to keep struggling to survive. It's actually something that the, the mushroom is encountering and seeing mm. and beginning to understand. And so I think it's something they, sh they share together, mm -hmm. but I think it's just overall what the story is kind of embodying. Reasons to read the book, rapid fire. Number one, I don't wanna suffer alone. Please read the book so I don't have to suffer alone. You can understand string theory with full confidence for about five seconds before it becomes confusing again. Oh my God. <laughs> it's complicated. Like there's quantum physics. Like for a full second, I'm like, I'm a genius. I understand everything. And then I'm like, I don't understand everything. But it's done really well in the book. It's cheaper than therapy if you're struggling with cosmic meaningless in a random universe. If you got the big ol' sad Existential yeah, uh, thread. It's, it's very cathartic. I like it. Okay. Great sci-fi world building, serves the plot and characters without overwhelming it. I don't actually know how well the science holds up to someone who knows science, but to me it was very, very strongly written and believable, and it wasn't overwhelming. I think sci-fi doesn't appeal to necessarily everybody because they're a little put off on the technical stuff, but I didn't have that problem with this. It was very easy to kind of read through, and there was also enough of it for the novel to have substance. Mm. Good balance. A compelling, unexpected yet believable love story. I didn't know how the mushroom and state-sanctioned murderer was going to work out, but it actually ended up being super romantic and compelling. Both the protagonists are uniquely calm in chaos or crisis, which creates a reading experience that feels safe even in a world that is ending. This is probably one of my favorite things about the book. Uh, it's a very scary setting. It's a very scary world. But Everything, they're not anxious. They're not anxious. Like they, it's not that they don't experience like anxious moments where like there's immediate peril and like you're wondering, oh my God, what's gonna happen to them? But as someone who, like, it just feels really safe as a reader to be um, kind of experiencing the world through both of their eyes. Because no matter what's happening, you kind of have the confidence that Lufun can take care of it, Anja can take care of it. Like, they're gonna make it through. You have that kind of confidence, like, right through the end, that it's going to work out okay, even if the entire world is literally ending around them. <laughs> Which is a lot. Yeah, no, I definitely, it can be tiring to read a protagonist that is like anxious all the time, yeah. so. If they're freaking out having a breakdown, yeah. it's a little bit more miserable. Oh yeah, they do bang in the extras. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. They, they bang. Okay, but they're fully together in this? Like yes, they, they kiss? Yeah, they do. They are canon. This is not, there is, this is not subtle subtext or baiting. It is 100% they are in a romantic soulmate relationship. They are canonly, romantically in love with each other attracted to each other and they they bang like they, <laughs> the whole package happily ever are after the extras in this book or did you yes. have to find them online? no the extras are in the second volume at oh, the very okay. end there's a bunch of them and it's uh, takes place like a little while after the actual ending of the book and it's kind of happily ever after we love that yeah well if you guys want to read this book you can click the link in the comments or the description down below you can order them on amazon and we can join in on stitch and talk about mushroom sex in the extras <laughs> oh my god but honestly it sounds like a really i think this is like the first one of these we've done where a lot of the questions weren't about like the top and the bottom and stuff <laughs> like that like we just delved into like the themes and the yeah. plot a bit more Sci-fi is cool. That's not to say that other books don't have good plot, but yeah, sci-fi is definitely something we're both super interested <laughs> in, so. Awesome, well thank you so much Stitch for preparing this. Aww. You're my little mushroom. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>